Over 50 years, ocean scientists and marine biologists have been studying the unprecedented rates of change that coral reef systems around the world have been experiencing. These specialists continue to voice their extreme concerns on a global level. But who should be listening? And more importantly, why should we be worried? Hello and welcome. I'm Melissa Gurney, and to examine this social ecological crisis, we are here at the University of Western Australia's Australian Institute of Marine Science to interview Assistant Professor Dr. Yan Zink. Yeah, first of all, uh, coral reefs have a very aesthetic value to humans, and uh, but second of all, uh, coral reefs harbour about 25% of all marine species on Earth. And this is uh, even they cover only a very small area of of, the, of our oceans. So that means that uh, all the fishes and the structure that, that it uh, provides, um, they have a perfect environment to flourish. And the coral reefs are very important for tourism, for coastal protection from storms and cyclones. And the fishery industry, for sure, has also a big role to play. And people think that uh, the economic value of a coral reef is on the order of $370 billion, US dollars, uh, globally seen. So in the case uh, of our study in uh, southwestern Madagascar, we uh, found that the, especially the coral cover in the uh, reef flats, that is the top of the reef, that is normally exposed during uh, low tides, uh, this was totally uh, dis dis destroyed. So there was a coral cover of about 5% left. Um, and uh, only 40, 50 years ago, this was a lush uh, coral garden covered with lots of uh, coral. The once pristine and vibrant Grand Recif of Toliara is one such major barrier reef system stretching over 19 kilometres of southwest Madagascar, which has undergone intensive studies from the 1960s and has become highly degraded since the 1980s. This ocean system previously supported over 6,000 identifiable marine life species and boasted the richest biodiversity system in the whole of the Indian Ocean, but shameably it has suffered catastrophic deterioration. Yes, mainly overfishing and it's the, the practice of fishing as well. So what happened in Madagascar is the, the people actually do uh, reef gleaning. This is uh, they trample on the corals, they walk over the reef flat, turn the corals around and search for octopus. Well, it's a very dis destructive uh, fishing method that you find very often in uh, countries uh, where, the re where the resources are very poor and where the technical uh, opportunities are rather low. So Madagascar is one of the countries that uh, suffers a lot from these uh, conditions. People actually fish just with small uh, boats and not even with engine boats, just with small boats and sail. And then they get out of the boat, trample over the corals, uh, trying to uh, get as many fish as possible. One particular um, action that was very successful was uh, partial closures. So it, it means that you close fishing grounds for particular species for several weeks or months and this actually opens up uh, opportunities if the fishermen go back to these places so it can rebuild stocks and they can actually see that these partial closures bring something for them that they can increase their livelihoods, they can increase their income and when you can show that then you make a difference. Well, there we have it, exclusive insight into a, a global problem that is threatening the very existence of many marine life and animals. I'm Melissa Gurney for Undercurrent.